The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. The writer of Ecclesiastes tells us two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down, then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made with three cords isn't easily broken. Let's see how this might play out in someone's life today. Jackson slid into the small school theater and took a seat in the back row and waited for Mr. Ray, the music and arts teacher. It looked like there was only one other kid who showed up to build the set for the fifth grade production of Charlotte's Web, a mall from Mrs. Wiseman's class. Hey. Hi. The two boys sat there in awkward silence until Mr. Ray showed up. Ah, my set team. Fantastic. You guys know each other? Kinda. Different classes. Well, you gotta get to spend a lot of time together in the next two weeks as we build this set and get it painted. You guys got any experience with power tools? Jackson could see Amal shift nervously in his seat. No, I just, I don't want to go on stage. Miss Wiseman said I could do this instead. Don't worry, I'll teach you what you need to know. How about you, Jackson? I'm pretty good with a hammer, and I didn't want to wear some silly animal costume. The two boys basically ignored each other as Mr. Ray showed them how to measure each piece of lumber for him to cut, and then he helped them lay out the pieces in a large frame. Now, this'll be one of the wall flats for the backdrop. We'll paint it as part of the barn. Amal, you want a hammer in these nails? Uh, I guess. I'll hold it more like this. Don't worry, you'll get it. I'll do this side. Jackson nailed together the entire flat while Amal still struggled with one corner. Ah, <sighs> what a klutz. But it was a different story the next day when they started to paint. This flat is part of our barn wall. I want you guys to paint a couple of chickens right there. Amal grabbed a brush right away. Oh, do, do you want them to look like real chickens or like cartoons? Nah, just give them your own personal spin. Amal got to work right away creating an entire palette of colors while Jackson was still trying to figure out which brush to pick. Now, I've got to run down to the art room. Amal, why don't you show Jackson how to get started? I don't really... Mr. Ray smiled at them both. He needs a hand. I think you guys will make a great team. Mr. Ray hurried out. Jackson and Amal avoided each other's eyes. <clears throat> well, I'll sketch an outline for the chickens. What do I do? Just, you know, fill it in. <sighs> I'm not really an artist. Jackson dipped his brush randomly in the blue paint and frowned at Amal's outline. Just have fun with it. Jackson swiped the blue brush, outlining a wing. <laughs> I've never seen a blue chicken. Oh. It's great. It'll stand out. Oh, uh, thanks. By the time Mr. Ray returned, Jackson was surprised to discover that he and Amal had already painted five brilliant hued chickens. Mr. Ray grinned. I've never seen a more flamboyant flock. Jackson held out his fist to Amal, and Amal, surprised, gave him a fist bump. Yep, see you boys tomorrow. The next day, Amal showed up with a bruised finger on his left hand. I can still paint with my right. What happened? Mr. Kunkel keeps putting me in as goalie during PE, and then I mess it up, and everyone on the team gets mad at me. Uh, do you stay on your toes? Keep your eye on the ball? No, I just panic when the ball comes at me. Look, I can show you some tips later in the parking lot before my mom comes. Really? That would be great. And you know, Jackson turned out to be a pretty good teacher because Amal managed to get two blocks during PE the next day. And when Jackson showed up to paint sets, stressed out by a math test, Amal grabbed his textbook. Fractions? Uh, I see all these weird numbers and I freeze up. You just have to break it down like this. With the mall's help, Jackson managed to stay calm during his test the next day. And by the middle of the next week, they had completed the entire backdrop for Charlotte's Web. Well done. I knew you two would make a great team. Amal's pretty okay. Jackson's not too terrible. Look, 
I know you guys are really different from each other, but it's boring if all your friends are just like you. Together, they started gathering wood scraps and wiping off brushes. Seriously, one of the wisest men to ever live pointed this out. Solomon. Solomon? Yep. He's this king in the Bible. He was a builder and an artist and super rich too. But for all the things he had, you know what he valued most? Friendship. He says it like this. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Hmm. On point. Yeah. Amal held out his fist and Jackson tapped it with his own. Maybe Solomon and Mr. Ray were onto something. John, are you ready for the tug of war? Oh, I'm ready, Brandon. On your mark, get set, go! go! How, how is this helping us to learn how to do the tug of war? It's not, it's not, something's wrong. We need to be both pulling on the same rope. Oh, yes, of course. <sighs> Let's try this again. Yeah. Star wipe. On your mark, get set. Go. <clears throat> oh, man, this isn't how a tug of war works either. No? No. We should be on opposite sides of the rope. Otherwise, it's just going to be. <clears throat> <clears throat> That was unusual. I'm okay. Hello everyone, my name is Brandon. I'm John. And this is The So-and-So Show, a show where me and my best friend try to have some fun, we learn something, <laughs> we do... You okay, do you need a lozenge? No, I'm fine, please, continue.
All right. Anyway, it's the show where me and my best friend, we try and learn something. What are you doing? Why are you making that noise? You want me to stop talking? No, it's, no, it's, no. no. Just. This is a show where me and my best friend, what is the matter? Why do you keep crying when I say best friend? Are you? It's just that we've been best friends. For a long time now, right? So long. Well, the thing is, I've got a new best friend. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we can still be friends without being best friends. I mean, we're around each other all the time. It makes sense that we could use a break once in a while. But, but, Believe me, I get it. But I don't... Who is this new best friend anyway? Tell me everything. Okay, so I was walking through the store the other day, mm -hmm. and I hear this voice out of the blue. Hi. So I turned around, and I said, hi, back, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not every day that you meet people who are just plain old friendly, right? So yeah. But... Anyway, before you know it, we got to talking, and you wouldn't believe how smart she is. I mean, she knows something about everything. We were in the store talking for like hours. Manager said it, I had to leave or make a purchase, and uh, next thing you know, we're walking out of the store together. <laughs> We've been best friends ever since. Well, that's awesome. When do I get to meet her? Oh, oh, she's here. Oh, she is? Yeah. Well, in that case, please welcome someone who knows everything. Is she coming? What? Oh, through the door? Oh, no, of course not. No, no. I don't understand. Besides, she's please. already here. Brandon, allow me to introduce Sylvia. Ah. Say hello, Sylvia. Hello, Sylvia. <laughs> she slays me. That's a great joke. Hey, John, you know your best friend can't be a robot voice in a box, right? Oh, jealous. No. Of course it can. Look at all the fun times we've had together already. Hey, Sylvia, play the friendship montage. Playing friendship montage. <laughs> John, this thing is not your friend. Jeez. It's a box that you found in It's a box, all right? And, it, and it's just like every other box in the store. That's not true. It is. That is not true. She has answers to all my questions. We have the same taste in music. We, we know okay, where look, I like it, to all eat. All it does is repeat facts from the internet and play generated playlists. No, so she also knows what the weather is going to be like. How does she know that? It's, 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 it's a computer. It's a, it can only give you facts, right? It can't give you, it can't help you like a, a real friend can. You know, like, like a, what's a problem that you're having right now? Anything. Tell me. Okay, okay. Well, you know my neighbor. Longbeard Carl? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, well, he keeps blocking my driveway. He's got like six cars for no reason, and like, it just keeps frustrating me. Okay, well, um, as your friend who is actually listening to your problems, I suggest that you go to Longbeard Carl and you tell him what's bothering you. <laughs> uh-huh. What do you think, Sylvia? Searching for tow truck companies. Oh, come on. You are not going to call a tow truck and tow Longbeard Carl's car without talking no, to No, I him. know, I know. But I'm just saying Sylvia heard the problem and came up with a possibly good solution. The tow truck is on its way. No, no. Cancel the tow truck. Cancel the tow truck. Tow truck canceled. She was just trying to be helpful. Uh huh. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys. Hi, Kellen. Now ordering nine melons. No, oh, no, 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 not melons. Kellen, no, cancel the melon order. Cancel the melon order. Canceling melons. Whoa! You guys found one of the new Sylvia's? You know, sometimes it seems like she found me. He thinks it's his new best friend. Oh, she's way more than a friend. She can do this. Sylvia, go disco mode. Disco mode engaged. <laughs> 
Sylvia, stop. No, no, don't listen to him, Sylvia. Uh, uh, go crazy bananas. Ordering 80 bananas. <sighs> what is it with you and produce? No, cancel the banana order. Canceling bananas. You got a story for us, Kellen? I do. And speaking of produce, here's Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter. Count Lupe and Mr. Fritter are the best of friends, as you may know, but sometimes they don't make the wisest choices. So here's a little wisdom from the book of Ecclesiastes to help them out. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Did you hear that, Count Lupe? Two are better than one. What perfect timing. We can help each other get to the bottom of these stairs. Ho oh, ho ho, who needs help? Last one down is improperly aged fromage. Ooh, ooh. Oh, ah, yay, ah, ooh. Count Lupe, you fell. Oh, crack, ooh. oh, crack, yeah, I'll be happy to help you traverse the dangerous staircase, Mr. Fritter. I have brought a pillow. Oh, thank you, Perry. You are a good friend. Um, yeah. The verses continue. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down. Then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. I couldn't have made it safely without you, Perry. And I could not have made it safely without you, Mr. Fritter. I could not make it to the hospital without either of you. Help! Friends are there to help each other. And when we mess up or when we fall down, friends can help us get back up. But Ecclesiastes has even more wisdom for us. <clears throat> One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made out of three cords isn't easily broken. It's very crowded in here, Perry. I hope we'll be safe. We will be safe, Mr. Fritter, as long as we stick together. There's strength in numbers. You're right, Perry. You're so right. Hey, where's Count Lupe anyway? <laughs> Hello, you two! <laughs> I hope, hope, hope you are enjoying being packed in like cans of sardines while I have all the space in the world! <laughs> are you sure it's safe up there alone, Count Lupe? We can make room for you down here if you'd like. <laughs> Never! Besides, I am not all alone. There are two bags of uh, frozen green peas here to, to, to keep me company. Oh, Count Lupe, those peas have been there for years. I wouldn't mess with them if I were you. <laughs> Nonsense. It is they who should not m m mess with m m me. Count Lupe, look out! Oh, no. Yeah, that was silly. But the point is, a friend is there for you when you need help. They give you advice. They stand up for you when you're in trouble. It's good to have a friend. Isn't that right, Count Lupe? Oui. Oui. Back to you guys. Thank you, Kellen. That was a good lesson. Mm -hmm. It was very uh, fruitful. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. Yeah. Hey, do you get why this thing can't be your friend now? I mean, it's not going to give you advice. It's not going to stand up for you when you're in trouble. Uh, okay, okay. You're right. But it is good for one thing. Sylvia? Reveal the question. Thank you, Sylvia. The question of the day is, what makes someone a good friend? Someone who listens and cares? Yeah, someone who knows a little more than just how to do an internet search. Hmm. Yeah. Brandon? Will you be my best friend again? Of course. Ah! <laughs> Sorry, Sylvia, I'm gonna go ahead and shut you down, all right? Yep. What are you doing, John? My mind is going. 
Daisy, Daisy, give your answer, do. So talk about it together. Uh, what makes someone a good friend? And we'll see you next time on the So and So Show. Yeah. Oof. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> How long are these stairs? <laughs> That's too much, man. That's amazing. <laughs>